Well, hi there, groovy person. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to see you. And I love looking into your eyes. I love looking directly in, into you, knowing that whatever we want to talk about, whatever I want to ask, I know with clarity and with certainty that my question will be answered here and now. So. Yes. No, yes. <laughs> First and foremost, I don't want to talk about meditation. Um, I, got that, <laughs> I got that down to an art. But also, too, as I was waiting to be called upon, um, I was lying in the bathroom. And for some reason, the word focus wheel came to mind. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe there's an app on my iPhone uh, for a focus wheel. And sure enough, there was one. And during break, I started uh, doing a focus wheel on my weight loss journey, which is what I want to talk about today. And I just started coming up with all these wonderful statements about how I love and appreciate my body with where it's at right now. I am fully aware that I can get from where I am to where I want to be. And I am definitely, definitely nourishing my body with all the delicious foods necessary to get me there. I feel at this point in time right now with my, with my weight loss journey that I plateaued and I've been trying to figure out where exactly I plateaued at. And I have fun with my fitness, don't get me wrong. I definitely spice up my exercise. I spice up my diet. I, I just need to know what the missing piece is in this weight loss journey. Not so much a missing piece, but a resistant piece in most people's journeys on most subjects is awareness of where they are. Especially when it has something to do with your body. It's your awareness of exactly where you are keeps you from activating the vibration or being in alignment with the active vibration of the improvement that you're seeking. This is a conversation that we have often and we really like to have it, that what is is what keeps you from becoming what you prefer even more than what is. The more that you are doing that is making you aware of where you are, that's adding resistance to the mix that is unnecessary. Let me see if I can translate this in a way that I'm understanding it. Forgive me, um, I am autistic, so sometimes one thing is said and I hear it differently. Um, it kind of sounds like what you're saying is, is that the, um, the current path I'm taking right now to my weight loss journey, basically I'm taking action that is basically telling me... Not about the action that you're taking. We think everything that you're doing is really good. And we like how you keep being inspired to something that's a little different. But... It's awareness of where you are that slows the journey to where you prefer to be. It's sort of the thing that trips all humans up. You are so aware of where you are. If you could let your mind drift more to where you want to be rather than be so aware of where you are on all subjects, whether it's a relationship or a financial condition or a physical condition, on every subject, it's your awareness of where you are that prevents you from moving more rapidly or at all toward what you want. You know how we keep talking about the vibrational reality and we always encourage Esther to gesture this away. It's over here. But we want to say right here, right now, that current reality, as far as your vibrational reality is concerned, is the past. So every time you're looking at what is, you're looking in the wrong direction. Every time you're looking at what is, you're preventing yourself from moving forward. It is sort of be like having a windshield in the floor of your automobile, and as you drive down the road, you're just looking there. Yeah. <laughs> Not helpful. Not that I've been using it, but um, as soon as I get home, I'm throwing my scale away. That's one of the things that we're talking about, or any conversations. It's not easy to be human and not be drawn into endless conversations about the rightness and the wrongness of activities and food and supplements and so forth. And all those piles, all those piles, all those piles, all those piles, all those piles. And if you could just realize that you've established with your inner being what you want and your inner being knows exactly how to get you there. And if you just sort of float in a more loose, free form way, especially now, now that you've got the hang of this, that bit by bit your inner being will call you to where you want to be. And the most important thing is that that would be way fun. Mm -hmm. New inspiration is really fun. Well, I will say this, it's never fun to sift and sort through the data that's being offered out there um, in regards to the right diet to eat, the right In regards to, to anything. Do. In regards to anything, basically, yeah. It just scrambles energy. Let's make another strong statement that you are eliciting. 
scrambled energy is the only thing that bugs you. The only thing that bothers you, the only thing that is at the basis of negative emotion is energy in contradiction. And it's not the world in contradiction, it's the energy within you that might be influenced by others, but it's your energy that's in contradiction. So can you see how what is is in contradiction to what's becoming? Yeah. What is is in contradiction to what's becoming. And yet I've been trained to face reality. Well, <laughs> cut it out. I don't face reality because I know I can get from where I am to where I want to be. And I always love to look forward because that's the best path to take is to go forward. You're doing extremely well and taking an unconventional approach to almost everything you do, which is exactly what you intended to do when you came. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And I love taking the unconventional uh, route too because that's where it feels the funnest at. It really is where it truly feels the funnest at. No. No. Definitely. Old is boring. It really is. And what is, is old. It really is. Can I just ask one more question? And this is actually in regards to dreams. So we had a conversation last year about how I came to one of your workshops and the people that went before me were in the dreams and I hadn't seen them before. Well, the last two nights, consecutive nights, I actually, actually had a dream about the workshops and you called me twice. That's how I knew that this was going to happen. I had no questions about it. I'm just wondering, though, can you... There was a certainty about you. You were standing, and ordinarily we do not choose someone who is standing because it's as if they are wanting to demonstrate something. They're wanting to stand out through their activity. We want you to know we did not choose you because you were standing. We chose you because of the energy around you. So sit or stand, it's the energy that we see. Beautiful. Beautifully stated. Um, in regards to dreams... When I have them, they feel real. Uh, they they are real. It's interesting because... They are as real as anything. You're perceiving them and your perception is real and what you're perceiving is reality. And you create your dream state just like you create your weight state with the same law of attraction and with the same focus. And so... So with these dreams, they're just... I feel like they're, they're more fun. More fun because one dream... More fun than what? Or, or increasingly more fun as you dream them? Increasingly more fun as I dream them. That's um, logical. I'm just not... I'm not really sure what it is that I'm doing to cause that. Uh, not that I'm complaining. God, no. I love these dreams very much. Um, it's just one night I'll have a dream that Roseanne is my mother. I'll have, an, <laughs> I'll have another dream that I'm just this um, rock star. I don't really sing or anything, but I'll just have a dream that I'm a rock star. Um, it just... They're just fun. They're just, they're just fun. Well, you see, the reason that you are accomplishing so much in your dreams, let's sit with that. The reason that you are accomplishing so much in your dreams is because while you are asleep, you have no resistance. So when you are awake with no resistance, you'll begin accomplishing more. Definitely. More that's in your vortex. We really want you to hear that, all of you, but we really want you to hear that. In your sleep state, your resistance is so much less, which means what's in your vortex that is calling you, whether you're asleep or whether you're awake, but in your sleep state, you go more easily. You don't protest so much in your sleep state because your beliefs are not active while you sleep. What's active when you are awake, to some degree, is active when you're asleep. So if you are troubled in your wake state, then you bring some of that resistance to your dream state. But the comparison of the resistance in your dream state to the resistance in your wake state is way different. There is so much less resistance while you sleep. Resistance is still possible. That's why some dreams reflect it. That definitely makes a lot of sense. Probably the reason why I had more fun in my dream sleep state than I do in my awake state. Well, you're not as hard on yourself and you don't cling so much to what is. So you allow your inner being to lead you. If you could begin saying, you can begin saying that I am a very satisfied and productive creator in my dream state and in my wake state. I'm a very productive creator in my dream state and in my wake state. I'm a very productive creator in my dream state and in my wake state. I have so much fun in my dream state and in my wake state. Then what happens is you let the freer attitude out into your wake state by acknowledging it. Whatever you give your attention to, you practice. So here's something else. In your wake state, as you recall your dreams, you practice 
the same free flow that is happening in your dream state in your wake state. On the segment of refreshment just now, Esther was resting, sitting, and she was thinking about just allowing her mind to go where it wanted to go without guiding it, sort of in the attitude of the friend who was wanting to, in meditation, just let it be. So she was sitting with that sort of quieted mind, and her mind sort of created almost a dream. It was not like a dream, not a dream in the sense that she wasn't asleep, but she went to her Utah house, and she went in the summertime, and she enjoyed the beauty of the grounds. They are beautiful. And some of you were there, not very many of you, because it's a house, not a meeting room, but 80 of you came. And a chef that she knows well came and brought food for you. And she let him choose it all. And when she walked into the room where it was, it was beautiful. And she saw you looking at it and liking it. And then you all went into the largest room in the house. And you sat in these chairs that she does not have yet. But she knows exactly what they look like. <laughs> and together we began an intimate discussion on a special subject that you knew about before you came. And she felt the satisfaction of the accomplishment of the conversation as you were all waving goodbye on your way down the driveway. Then she heard the bell. Time to go. So, was the dream for the purpose of creating something or for the pleasure? Was it what's already in her vortex and because she's in such a state of allowing that as she just sat in a quieted mind, her inner being gave her the picture of something that is already created? And was it for the purpose of creating it or was it for the pleasure of experiencing it? This is what we're asking you. Maybe both, but it's more for the pleasure of the experience of it. If you could let your dreams and your thoughts about what you do be for the ulterior motive of the pleasure of the moment rather than of the accomplishment of something that isn't yet, you'd have it. You'd have it. Now... It's our expectation that that's going to lead to something because it was so good, Esther is going to make that happen. It was delicious in her mouth. Everything about it she liked. She now wants that in a way. She did not want it that much before she saw it. You see? And so, isn't that a nice way to create? Isn't it nice to realize that you have treasures in your vortex that you've put there piece by piece that have been cooperative components with one another that have gathered other cooperative components that have set into motion things that as you discover them you will enjoy them isn't that what creation is all about you see so it isn't about standing over here where something isn't and moving over there where something is. It's standing in the vibrational frequency of all that you are, letting yourself discover or understand. She even placed her crew, she wants to call them friends, crew, family, in the five guest rooms. That's your room. That's your room. That's your room. That's your room. And in between seminars, when the people go back to their hotel, we will party. Yeah. <laughs> we'll eat good food. We'll play good music. She got carried away. Her vision was way more expansive than the five minutes in which it took place. An altered state of consciousness for the purpose of giving her the pleasure of the idea. You see what we're getting at? Toward what end? Doesn't matter. So, if we can convince you that your vortex is filled with movies and visions and activities and surprises and delights, and you've created every one of them, and if you could be satisfied with the existence of them and eager for your awareness of them, then everything that's in your vibrational reality, in your vortex, your reality, 
can come out and play with you where you are. 